Hello Squawks Head here with another instructional video on the K-50 Black Shark attack helicopter. In this video I'd like to talk about basic navigation across the map. In the first video we talked about trimmer settings and the two different trimmer states that you can get into um, and also uh, the video that followed we talked about entering the hover so I think it's only fair we talk about uh, navigating across the map and how we do that. Now. In the K-50 Black Shark there are two different systems that can help us navigate and they are on the right hand side of the cockpit we can see here. The first one I want to talk about is this one here. This, You can see this um, panel. Well this is called the PVI-800 and this is what's known as an inertial navigation system. It uses inertia, it uses movement relative to a fixed point to determine where your um, helicopter is and also to um, allow you to plot waypoints on the map for the route mode of the helicopter the autopilot to take us there so it's a really good closed system that um, allows us to punch in coordinates um, and for the autopilot to take us there next up here we've got the abris and the difference of this is this is a satellite navigational system and this is very much a visual representation. In fact, when you start the um, K50 up, this is the page you'll have. And to move it to the map, you just hit nav there and you can go across the map and zoom in and out. So this is a visual representation, a moving map of where we are um, based on satellite data. Whereas this works out where we are based on movement away from a fixed point. Now you might have often heard um, people say they're aligning the INS um, in, a, in a fighter or something like that. Well all that's doing is setting a point we or determining a point that we know the coordinates of and calibrating it in this device so that it knows where to start from. And in the aircraft they use accelerometers and gyroscopes to work out where you are relative to that fixed point. But we're not going to talk about how we fix it because we're quite lucky in the K50 in that it's already aligned when we start, even when we cold start. So that's a nice little um, sweetener for us. So how do we move to a waypoint or how do we set a waypoint? Well to do that we can first start using the F10 by using the F10 map. And here we are. We're Wujar al Hajar. There we are. We want to find a point that we want to navigate to. So let's say, here we go, we've got a crossroads near the coast. Let's put a marker down there. Now, there's two main types of northings and eastings that we can um, look at on the map. And you can see when you hit F10 on the top left, you've got northings, eastings, so your longitude and latitude, and also the elevation. Now the vanilla mode when you hit the F10 map, the sort of the default mode of the F10 map is to be in degrees, minutes and seconds. Now the PVI 800 doesn't use that coordinate system. It uses degrees and decimal minutes or degrees, minutes and decimal minutes. And to change to that, we need to press Alt and Y twice. And what we've done there, we've now changed the coordinates to degrees, minutes, decimal minutes. So it's important that we do that and we'll also have to do that on the Abris when we come to using that. Let's go back into the cockpit. Okay, so to enter a waypoint to tell our Black Shark where we want to go, um, we need to turn this into an edit mode. So just below the PVI 800 you've got a master mode knob here that's set to operational which is self-explanatory. It means it's in operational mode at the moment. We can't change anything. So if I were to click waypoint one, well we've already got a waypoint in there but we can't edit it. So to edit what we need to do, we need to left click on this knob to end. Now that's that will allow us to edit this PVI 800 or the waypoints and we can edit up to six waypoints or enter up to six waypoints in this device. So we move from operation to edit or enter then we click the waypoint button and then the number of the waypoint that we wish to select so in this case it will be one. Now you see here We've already got some coordinates pre, uh, put in there. Now, you may have a blank page, don't worry, a blank display, or you'll have coordinates. Either way, the process is the same. We need to overwrite these coordinates or enter new ones. So to do that, we need to click plus or zero. Then we need to go to the F10 map. We need to put our cursor over that fixed point and read off the top left of the northings. So here we've got three, four, 
15688. Now the PVI 800 only allows you to enter the first five coordinates. So, or the first five digits of the coordinate. So in this case, it would be 34156. So we go back here, 34156. Now to get to the Eastings on the next page, we have to click plus twice. Once, twice. Once you get that zero there, you know you can now start to enter the Eastings. So let's go to back to the map. Put our cursor over our point that we designated and we're going to end and check the uh, Eastings. So where are we? 35396. 35396. And to make sure this is saved, we need to press enter and you'll see it will wipe the panel. Now to check, we'll put this back into operational mode hit waypoint and the number and there you go there's the coordinate we've just entered and incidentally once you um, select that you'll see on the left hand side this HSI will change to uh, the waypoint um, that you are um, uh, directing the helicopter to so look if you click that it's changing it's changing the distance and the bearing you can see there so that's a good thing to note as well Okay, so now we've set waypoint one, what we need to do, we need to um, work out how we're going to get the helicopter there. Now, we could either fly to that waypoint manually using an indication on the HUD. So if we go up to the HUD, we look forward, you'll see the heading tape along here, along the top, you'll see a diamond. Now that diamond is basically where that waypoint is relative to us in the HUD, where the heading we need to turn to, to intercept that waypoint, it's there. Okay, now to show you how the we can set the autopilot to do this, we need to take off. And what we need to do is we need to make sure, and you'll remember this from the previous video, that we are not in flight director mode. Because flight director mode will not allow us to engage root mode of the aircraft. And remember, root mode is the mode that the aircraft can go into to automatically navigate towards waypoints that we've set in the PVI 800. So we need that off if we're going to move to that coordinate there. So we're going to take off, raise the collective, we're going to add some forward pitch as we do. And as we take off, we're going to raise that gear up. Now what we need to do is we need a bit of forward motion. Obviously, if we're going to tell the uh, autopilot or the route mode to take us to that waypoint, we need to be going forward because it's not really going to work. So trim. Okay, let's do this slowly then. Let's just take off for a bit. Right, let's get level. So, in order for us to tell the aircraft to travel to that waypoint we've just set on the map, we need to click Engage Route Mode. And you'll see here there's a button on the um, collective. Well, you can't actually click that in the cockpit, so you need it bound in your control options. And I've got it bound... Uh, uh, to my uh, HOTAS, so we're going to click that now, root mode, and watch what happens. There we go, ignore the screen at the bottom, that's uh, just it refreshing itself, that's nothing to do with this. So up here, in the HUD, we'll see we're now aligned with that diamond. So what's happening is the PVI-800 is telling the autopilot to head to that diamond on the HUD, which will take us above, over that fixed point of the coordinates that we've entered here. Now what will happen when we hit that fixed point is this will automatically switch to number 2, waypoint 2, and then we'll traverse. So it will follow waypoint 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to 6. We can uh, rearrange the order, but we'll talk about that in another video. I intend to dissect this PVI-800 in a follow-up video um, to explain a bit more about it. But for now, just know that if we hit waypoint 1, it'll automatically switch to waypoint 2, and then we'll move, um, we'll direct us to the next waypoint. So that's one way of us navigating to a position on the map that using coordinates entered from the F10 map. Right, let me turn away this off for a second. We're going to show you how you use the Abris to find the coordinates. And the way to do it, let's get back onto the page that you get, the vanilla page when you start up. So that will be easier for you. So this is the page. You, when you start the K50, you got a hot started one or you start it up, you'll find that these... This is the page that you start at. Now to get to the map, hit nav, and there's the map. Now, you hit the map button. So, let's do that again. So nav, map. 
And once we've done that, we've got this map here, and let's find a point. Now we can zoom out with scale minus and scale plus, but what we want to do, we want to find coordinates. And actually, before we do that, I've uh, missed something quite crucial, um, is we need to change the units because this Abris system works on a system of, you've guessed it, degrees, minutes and seconds and we need to change the units to degrees minutes and decimal minutes and to do that what we need to do we need to go back to that first page that nav page that we started at we need to hit option setup and you can click down here you can use this knob to you can turn this knob to go up and down as well but you can use these these are a bit quicker units and to select units we hit right click the knob and look, you've got latitude up here. You've got degrees, minutes, and seconds. Well, to change that, we right-click here, and that'll change it to a decimal. Or you could click the Change button, and that'll change to a decimal. Then you know you're on degrees and decimal minutes. Now, to move down, we can press that down, and we can hit Change. So now we've changed the latitude and the longitude to degrees and decimal minutes. Let's go back to the original page. So make sure you do that before we um, start entering details for the next uh, waypoint. Right, now we hit Nav, Map. We're back to this map here. So to get the coordinates of somewhere we need to go, say you've got a target that's been highlighted by um, a wingman or predetermined in the map, and we want to head there, um, and we're not going to use the F10 map, what we're going to do is we're going to click info here and you'll see it's changed um, and what this is now this is changed north is up obviously um, and we've got a little square let's zoom in a bit so you can see it we've got a square over our token and to move that square we click this with the left mouse button and we hold and we roll or you can use the mouse wheel to scroll you can use either Okay, so that moves it on, if you can see here, like a horizontal axis. And then what we're going to do to change it to vertical, we right click the knob and we move it up and down. So let's find a waypoint. Let's, um, let's say, or a place to set a waypoint. Let's say, let's do it on the next crossroads there. Look, let's come down here. Okay, now as I move it about, you'll see up here, there's a mark. And this is telling me the degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes to that location there within that box. So what we can do here is do exactly what we did before. We're going to go to enter mode, waypoint 1. Let's overwrite the waypoint. Press plus. We've got 34150. 34150. And remember to get onto the Eastings, we need to click that twice. 035400. 35400. Enter. Turn it back to operational mode. Hit waypoint one. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, just to show that it works, we come out of hover mode start moving forward in fact it's right ahead of us so let's just move away from that for a second let's move over towards the coast and then we'll show you what happens when you engage route mode off we go so we're traveling forward we want to navigate to that waypoint that we've just set and we're going to click the route mode button remember it's on the uh, collective but you need to uh, bind it in the control options there we go and look what it does it's taking me to that waypoint. Now it's important to note that you can actually trim the aircraft as it's flying towards the waypoint um, if you want to pitch down a bit more so what you can do and that uses the original sort of vanilla trimming mode so we haven't got the flight director on um, we've got altitude hold we'll turn that off um, so this is your vanilla mode of trim so what you want to do is you want to lower the nose, you hold the trimmer down, hold it down, hold it down, hold it to the point you want, then you let go. And what will happen is once you've trimmed it, again, the autopilot will return you to the heading 
towards the next waypoint, but trying to maintain the trimmer system, the trimmer settings that you've just set. So I'm holding down the trimmer here, let go, should hold the pitch as best it can to the waypoint. Now we've just gone over that waypoint, so it's moved to waypoint two. And once it goes over waypoint two, it will move to waypoint three, and you'll see it will take me through the system of waypoints. In fact, you can see I've already predetermined the waypoints here. So actually, if we go over this waypoint here, You'll see it will take me around to the next one and that's how it works. So that's a basic introduction into how to enter waypoints um, and in a follow up video what I'm going to do I'm going to dissect this PVI 800 and show you how you can plot mark points, how you can slave the Schwal to um, the mark points that you've plotted and so on. But perhaps the thing to mention at this stage is that these buttons on the left hand side not the cell coordinate button, these buttons here are all telling the aircraft in route mode which point you want to head towards, these four. So these are programmable um, and you can um, input coordinates and if you engage route mode it'll take you to those points. So that's what they do, but we'll speak more in depth about it later. So quick recap, PVI 800, we enter coordinates in degrees and decimal minutes it works independently of the abris although we can use the abris to get coordinates to then punch into this and this can store up to six waypoints and every time you pass a waypoint in route mode it'll go to the next one um, and uh, and so on now to disengage it it's very straightforward you just click waypoint and it'll disengage the route mode but do remember to flick this switch back uh, on the uh, collective because you'll find you won't be able to engage other modes like hover if that route mode's on and likewise if you engage the flight director by clicking this button here it'll disengage route mode well route mode will be selected but it won't follow the route so uh, flight director will need you require you to manually fly to the waypoints that you've set so i hope that that gives um, a good introduction into basic navigation um, as I say, I'll break down the PVI 800 in the next tutorial and we'll talk a little bit more about what it does. But just get the hang of editing waypoints. Remember, you can click waypoint 1, select it to enter, put your coordinates in. Um, for instance, look, um, well, we can do it, uh, <laughs> we'll do it in another tutorial. But um, you put in your waypoint um, and then once you press enter, you select operational mode and the waypoint number. So edit, edit your waypoint enter operational mode waypoint one and it'll take you there as long as you engage that route mode and you are not in flight director mode so have some fun uh, move around your airfields and so on um, and any questions to say uh, put them in the comments below um, i'll do a more in-depth video shortly and uh, i hope to catch you sometime soon uh, for the next video all right bye bye for now